I'm excited to see this one. Manessi, I'm glad to see them playing the kind of Dota we saw in game number one. Uh, it was just really solid from start to finish. At no point did it look all too shaky. I mean, we saw Moon get solo killed in the mid lane on Kunkka, and then after that, he just took over the game single-handedly. So, uh, fantastic showing from him, and uh, curious to see what comes out now that the game number two is on its way. It does look like Manessi will again be on the Radiant side, however. Yeah, they will opt for that. They do pick up the Brewmaster first pick, so it does look like we're probably going to see KP's Brew instead of that Sanking this time around. Of course, DBG, their first pick now. They will go for the Phoenix. Yeah, interesting if they stick with the Void or go somewhere else. And they will go for a Centaur, so different opening for them. I think you, you try out the Void Strike game one, they maybe went a bit too all in with all this crazy big team fight, and they're going to say, look, let's you know switch it up a bit, go for something a little bit different, and see how that's going to maybe affect things with the draft. Lanham, a vet veteran player and captain for this DBG side. And some kind of newcomers as well. OP's had some time in the limelight, as has Kama. Uh, but some definitely some younger players on this DPG side. Maneski, they pick up that lone druid. I mean, he's come back into the meta as of late. It's really hard to kill. The damage he deals is just insane. He just hits from a mile away. And I mean, you've got the Phoenix, right? He just wants to get in there. He wants to throw the egg out. But this lone druid can easily burst that egg down. So is Phoenix your hero then? You know, yes. Michael Phoenix, this, yes. goes, this has Absolutely. to be your hero. Okay, so you're happy to see a Phoenix come into play. There it is. Dota 2, that's what we want to hear. So, excited for the Phoenix then? Absolutely. Okay. I will be critiquing everything he does on the <laughs> Phoenix. Is that your best hero? No, definitely not, but, you know, it's still a pretty beautiful hero. It is the Phoenix after all. Always fun to, to see team fights around it because it just becomes a focal point. It's like when that X goes down, it's either you run away from it or you try and kill it or if you're standing under and fighting, you're probably in for a bad time. So uh, it's it's great how this hero just draws a team fight. Wherever, wherever it goes, team fights will follow. And you're forced to make a decision as well. Like once that egg comes up, it's like, do I aim the egg? Do I aim the uh, the enemy team? Like, what do I actually choose here? Naturally, it's usually the egg. You want to press yeah. that damn thing down, but sometimes you don't really have the opportunity. Yeah, it, it's, I think teams are going a lot better about knowing if you can in that moment whether it's even possible. Because whenever it's possible, nine times out of ten, you're just going to focus it down. If it's not possible, you, that's when you have to decide: do we run? Do we kill other heroes? Do we stand? Are we going to die? It's, it gets very complicated to make those kind of in the moment decisions uh, when a phoenix suddenly drops on top of you. Another thing we've seen is a lot of teams, because Phoenix often has, doesn't go like a blink dagger, you're diving in, having some kind of instant disable to cancel the dive, like the Shadow Shamans or the Lions with the Hex, can be a very good way to try and burst down a Phoenix. And certainly so. We'll see if Mineski do pick something like that up. Of course, they do have a couple more picks for supports right now. Their DBG will be the first ones to go here. And they will go for that go. Shadow Shaman. They take the Shadow Shaman, so... They want some lockdown, it's a strong support. Curious to see which of the Phoenix Shaman is playing more in the offlane with the central. Normally Shaman's pretty good in the four position role, but could go either way. We've been seeing this core Shaman, it's just, it feels kind of ridiculous, but when they get this level up so fast and they just start pushing towers at level six, there's just nothing you can do about it. I'd love to see it as well from the side of DBG if they do wish to run it. Yeah, it gives them a lot of lockdown to work around. When you're playing against Brewmaster, it's very helpful if you have some kind of uh, stun and lockdown that can prevent him from getting primal split. If you want to gank a Brewmaster and you have no stuns, it's never going to work. He's going to primal split every single time. Uh, even the central stun is typically not going to be enough. You blink stun, unless you burst him during that two second stun duration, he's getting out of there with a the stampede. So we'll see if this Shaman is going to give him enough lockdown to deal with the Brew. As Neski now look to respond themselves. They revealed quite a bit. There's this two heroes, two cores. They're going to go back for a support now. There's a hero that can cause problems for Phoenix. It's always been one of the counters to Phoenix in a way. You can put the silence on him and just make his life hard. Similarly, cancel the shackles from the Shadow Shaman. Both these supports do not like seeing a Skyrath on the other side. Yeah, certainly so. And it is going to be a support Skyrath again, right? Like, we aren't going to see a core Skyrath coming out. You probably throw the lone druid in the mid lane. Just let him stay there. Just use the support, Skyrath. Just throw up that, those nukes. The DBG. Yeah. How do they go about this? The fourth pick now. Still plenty of reserve time to go. Yeah, they've got to pick their middle, their carry here. They've got to decide which one do you want to reveal. Which one is, you know, going to tell your opponents less and be less likely to be countered. Because at this point, they've only really shown their support in their offlane. 
going to say this moment for Wood. Like, it doesn't feel like they actually have a way to deal with this. And there's the okay. Void again coming out. Now, Kama was landing some nice chronos. Yeah. I like it more this time because it's less all in on team fight. They have a more balanced draft. Yeah. The only problem was they just kept aiming the conquer every single time yes. a chrono happened, which is just a massive mistake. But we'll see. This time around, there's no conquer. And against the Lone Druid, I do believe it is pretty nice. You can just focus the actual Lone Druid instead of his Spirit Bear. And maybe if they, the conquer was the key here last game, they could even just pick it up right now if they want to. And this give a lot of time to think about this one, think things through. There's less worry about the huge team fight around the Chrono. I mean, it's still very good. Just Phoenix plus Void alone is a lot, but uh, the Shaman Center are not those obvious heroes to partner with a Faceless Void. Vineski, getting that time tick down. Of course, yep. I, like you said, like they have the Conquer available if they do wish to go for it. So where are you going to really lane this Conquer, right? Like, usually you want to see that Lone Druid mid, maybe the Brew off as well. Like, where, where would you actually put the Conquer? Probably just run, you'd have to run a mid and play the Lone Druid in the, the side lane, but it looks like they may want Lone Druid mid. They get Beastmaster. We're going to see support Brew, it looks like. Uh, a lot of teams have been playing Brewmaster as a 4 or 5 position in the support role. It's just very hard to, to fight him when you're just having those harass battles with the new Drunken Brawler. You just activate it and start right-clicking away. And Beastmaster likely to be the KP hero for the off lane. Beastmaster Skyra, very strong, scary lane, a lot of harass, wild axes plus arcane bolt spam, not fun to lane against. The new boar is very strong as well. Gives them a vision option, give them a way to just combo with Skyra. Roar into Mystic Flare, that's a dead void. So not going to be an easy void game when you see those heroes on the other side. When you use that Cypher Brew on, uh, on Faceless Void, does, can he time lock himself? Can he actually proc the, uh, the extra damage? I wonder. With, um, with the, oh, the Cinder Brew. Yeah, the Cinder Brew, that's the one. Um, no idea. We'll find out. Hopefully. <laughs> These new 7.20 mechanics, uh, you know, some crazy stuff could go on. Certainly so. Do you wonder, DBG, what they'll be running mid at this point? Like, if they haven't revealed anything yet. Of course, we saw the Leshrac up against the Kunkka. It seemed like they were having a good time, but eventually he just dropped off and just became a walking creep almost. This time around, I wonder, will they give OP something maybe a bit more influential throughout that, that mid to late game? Yeah, it was just a bit too squishy. Like, it yeah. was good at the start as he kind of had with that solo kill. It just didn't really turn into much. And once team fight started happening, it was void taking nice chronos, but if he went near the chrono do damage, he was getting blown up. So maybe something that just isn't going to be quite as susceptible to those ganks. Beastmaster Skyrath sounds scary already, so we'll see what he gets. Fan on the Lycan, I think worried about Maneski just going for this kind of you know, zoo strategy where there's Necro books, there's summons, you're gonna push with the Lone Druid Bear and just take all these towers really quickly because right now DBG do not have good D-push and a Lycan Beastmaster Lone Druid will push down towers incredibly fast. It could be one of those uh, 25 minute games we've been seeing in 7.20 if DBG aren't too careful. Maneski, final ban for them. What will it be? They will actually get rid of the lane up. Okay. I think it would have been a good pick to round things off. And Tink, uh, here we go. How disgusting. It's a Moon Classic. Yeah, he's, a moon a, classic. he's a dirty Tinker player. Should be ashamed of himself. <laughs> he's here. I don't know why it's allowed in this game. Never Look, it's, it's no techies, okay? We, we'll allow the Tinker. At least techies can just kill himself, though. <laughs> oh, man. DBG, final pickup. They've got, like, they've got the Void for the Tinker. Right, you've got the Shadow Shaman, assuming he gets a blink, you've got the Centaur as well, so you've got the catch available. Problem is, they don't really have any scout ability here. It's not, yeah, it's definitely not terrible, but it's definitely not also the best lineup as well as dealing with a Tinker. The good news is they have maybe a last pick. Could see a Storm Spirit type hero. It's not a great Storm game when you see the other heroes in the lineup. Also, Storm has just kind of fallen off. I think you're better off going for something like the Zeus and going for like a Zeus Faceless Void here, but... Oh. It's going to be a big carry. Medusa. Mm. I, this is a hero that struggles against laser. I'm a bit surprised to see them pick it up, but it does give them another carry. And I think when you have Void, we saw last game, Void isn't going to carry the game. He's going to hit some chronos, maybe kill a hero or two, but he can't do a whole lot outside of chronos. So I think they felt pressured to get a second carry, and that's going to be the Medusa. The thing is as well, like OP, if he goes into that mid lane with the Medusa up against that Tinker, that Mystic Snake is so infuriating to go up against throughout that, uh, that laning stage. Like, Moon just may not be able to sustain within that lane uh, until he gets those BOTs anyway, I guess. But 
We'll see how OP plays it. I mean, this hero has been popping up a lot at 7.20. And it, it's just back to what it used to be. You just can't kill it. Oh, yeah. And there's uh, some great ways to go around ganking Beastmaster. You, know, you can TP on his, on his Bora, on his Hawk. And if he finds someone with a Roar, Tick is going to be instantly following up with a TP in. And that's going to make life pretty difficult for DBG. They have to be very careful about this. Squishy supports aren't happy to see a Tinker on the other side as well. So we'll see if they can maybe shut down Moon's early game. But even for that, normally you want to have heroes that can like invade his jungle, slow down his farm. And I don't really feel like a, a Void Medusa is that. They're heroes that want to farm and get levels themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And gods, we have to mention, by the way, we forgot to mention, uh, for anyone wanting to watch these in Chinese, they are also streaming on Panda TV. So it will be available there as well. As well as Huya, I believe. There's uh, a couple places, yeah, in the, the Chinese streaming sites you can watch. But here we are live in Melbourne, as well as on the English Twitch streams that are available out there. Ready for game number two. Let's get things underway. Hopefully it's going to be a good one. to my ears as Maneski look to close this one out 2-0. This is game number two. Game one going the way of Maneski and DBG looking to bounce back. They had a great group stage yesterday, but they've got to find a way to turn this series around or they will find themselves down in the best of one lower bracket, which is pretty brutal. It certainly is. We'll be having some of that lower bracket action later on today. Catch some of the Aussie teams as well as the Southeast Asian qualifying teams. Firefly, Pop a bit of harassment. Funnily enough, it looks like there might be some camera issues going on. Like, we fixed the audio and now the camera doesn't want to work. But nevertheless, it's fine. Make it work. Bot lane, Guevara, copying a fair bit of harassment. It's that lone druid, like, it's just so hard to go against this man, especially before the minute mark. Yeah. It's like you're, you're fighting two heroes. The, the bear as well like gives all that extra right click damage and it's his tankiness as well that comes with it. So makes life hard. And also find the brewmaster. He's got the drunken brawler. You want to trade right clicks with him. He's going to be evading. He's going to be critting you. Pilot Eye comes in with that brawler, trying to steal this rune and he needs to be careful. Yeah, Pilot Eye will make a run for it, JT. Yeah. They give up on the rune. They wanted four runes. They, you know, they were like, we want everything. We're not willing to give up a single one. But in the end, they had to give up at least one. And Firefly up top, he may have to level up the dive here. Okay, Boris get him low. Those double boars, it's just so much damage coming out. Can you really call those boars? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe here in Australia. Got some interesting wildlife ourselves, but that is, uh, that's a new one. Mid lane Tinker versus Medusa. Could be a lane that Tinker does okay in, although I imagine Medusa simultaneously also will do fine. We just saw Pilot die. Well, we didn't see, but he does the yeah. off to the T2 tower. He does return to that bot lane, just so he can respawn quickly, and he will go straight after Lan M now. Yeah, I think he felt like he took too much harass for that early bounty rune fight and just wanted to get the free send back and heal up. So, he'll be back there just spamming that drunken brawl. Not the easiest lane for him against these heavy right clickers. He's already yeah, getting harassed back down once again. Going for boots first so we can get those right clicks in, but the downside is way less regen and no stout shield. The damage block from the stout shield is typically what you want when you're playing against these right clickers like a Shadow Shaman. Yeah, certainly so. The top lane as well, like Kama, he's up against that Beastmaster and KP. Like, this is going to be a very hard lane for this Void. We've got these Mystic Flares coming out over and over again. Uh, excuse me, did I say Mystic Flares? Arcane Bolt, KP will be there as well with the boars. Like, if you're Kama, it, it just feels like it's going to be a very hard lane. And as well as that, if he's going to go for that Battle Fury again, gods, I don't know if he's going to get it at an optimal time. Yeah. It doesn't always feel good to use a Time Walk for an Arcane Bolt because there's going to be another one coming a few seconds later and you put it on cooldown. Firefly. Doesn't have Icarus Dive either. He has to be a bit careful about how far he goes. Be all right though. Yeah, pretty even, even lane so far. It looks like no, no team getting a, a huge dominating win in any specific lane. And back at mid moon, we saw last game a great one v one battle between these two players. Solo kills and a lot of early action here as a regen rune comes out and it does look like Febby is going to leave this one for Moon. I think 
as much as it's great in the Skywrath Mage, you'd much prefer your Tinker. Moon gets a region from the squad. Here yeah. comes the spam. The Two laser. minute runes, everyone's favorite. Does immediately break it, at least with the Mystic Stake, but this gives uh, gives Moon a nice little advantage in this 1v1. And... Well. There's the deny coming out from him. He respawns a lot faster if you go down to that tier 2 tower. Meanwhile, Pilot die bot lane, still making a chase. JT as well, though, Guevara will just turn around. That retaliate damage, you do have to be careful. It's just, it does stack up, and you can kind of underestimate how much it does. The mid lane Moon also falling very low to that Mystic Snake again. And this is that point now with the Medusa, like she's about to hit level 5. With the level 3 Mystic Snake, it's just so hard to lane against her. Yeah, and anytime Tinker comes close, even like some split shots are just clipping Moon and getting him low. Has a bottle queued up, but he's actually starting to struggle a bit in this lane, so... A good start, but we'll have to see if he can actually sustain himself or not here. Come on. Good boy, Micro gets it away from Kama, so he can keep the slow and summons another one. Kama's gonna, yeah, have to time walk out of there. They'll be thinking about the chase, but it's better of it. Kama again, he's, he's having, I wouldn't say a rough lane, like he's, he's still keeping up, but... As time goes on, it just feels like KP with these balls and Febby with this harassment with the Arcane Bolt, it's just going to get worse and worse. Yeah. And the great thing with the double boars is that you can also just use them for last hitting. You time your last hits with a double boar plus Beastmaster, you're going to be denying and last hitting almost everything. Void falling behind, seven denies on Beastmaster, and quite a few more last hits. Firefly, there's just not much he can do about this either. Oh, he tried to catch the Void Salve there with the, the Concussive, but Kamet in the fog. The bot lane, Lan M. I wanted to go for after that Illusion Room, but Pilotide does find it. Triple Fairy Fire, all the damage in the world. No wonder Pilotide wasn't having that much fun down here with the right clicks. Absolutely. <laughs> and then again, trying to, he's still sustaining oh, the lane. He back at top, it looks like they might be diving. They do. My silence comes out and they are going after that Void Camel. Should end up falling and that will be the first blood. <laughs> nice Ancient Seal coming out from Febby. So make sure he can't just time walk it off and Firefly. Really? Febby's like, oh, should I, should I suicide to this tower? What's he going to do? He's looking for somewhere to go die. He does salve. salve up now and does lose it though pretty quickly. But can you find the kill on Firefly? One more Arcane Bolt. Oh. Is the damage going to be there? Febby wants it. He won't get it. <laughs> He will end up going down. He tried to go for the right click, but those fire spirits, they are level two. It's just so damn slow when you get yeah. hit by it. Underestimating the stick charges, and I imagine he expected to get a bit more salve regen off, but it got cancelled partway through. Nevertheless, He's going to TP back in this lane and be in a great spot, though. He even yeah. TPs in for the bottle refill. Very selfless play from Febby. Yeah. With those double null, null talisman, it's going to be that much harder to sustain against him. Yep. Bot lane, Guevara seems to be doing pretty well. He's third in terms of last hits right now. He is behind JT, but I mean, the Centaur is getting plenty in this off lane, although he does just get rooted. Meanwhile, Firefly finds himself in trouble, but he does Icarus dive away, though. Febby has not stopped. He is going to continue making this chase on Firefly. He may end up falling, though there is a rotation coming in, and land him. He will be there. The Shrine will be committed, and now the Shackle as well. Kama also moving in, Bebby, he's in massive, massive trouble, and it looks like he should end up falling, and he will. The Aether Shock is there from Land M. Well, we'll see uh, if Maneski can turn this lane stage into something more. These side lanes going very well for them. Certainly so. Navarra. Cop a bit of hits from Pilot Die, but again, it is a Centaur. He will be perfectly fine for the moment. Navarra, I do wonder what kind of build he goes for on this Centaur. Like, are you just going to rush a Vanguard into the Crimson, or do you go for a Blink earlier on? Um, this game, uh, probably for the Centaur, that you're looking at least at a Hood, maybe even a Pipe because of the Tinker. Oh, Hood, he's in trouble. He throws out the Rockets, but land him. He's got this... Up the shackles, and with that, Firefly jumps in. And Moon, he might find Firefly, and he will. Okay. Oh, the neutral, oh, the neutral creeps, oh, they denied. do get it. Uh, Meanwhile, bot lane, they are going after Guevara as well. It looks like JT should be able to find this. The Guevara, is he actually gonna run out of here safely? JT, he does find him. Nice chase down. TP's out, so he doesn't get caught as well. Pile I die, he needs to be a little bit careful. I'm sure he'd love the XP in this lane, but oh, ni nice move by JT. Didn't TP at the fountain, just TP back to lane. Yeah, very clever by him. We'll just get back to farming. 
So if I may, if I direct your attention towards OP right now, like you're still free farming pretty much. It, these Medusas, they get very scary. Once you get a bit of attack up, you just go into the neutrals and suddenly you're just farming safely the whole game. Do you even bother trying to shut her down? Or do you just, just leave him? Um, I think you, you may look, look for some rotations with when Skyrath hits level 6. Once you have Mystic Flare, you can start looking for the raw Mystic Flare combos. Tinker boots to travel, he can always TP in. So they've definitely got ways to beat the Medusa later on with Tinker, but as it stands, you've got to just, you know, play your game. Get Tinker's items on. Online and then look to start making plays. Well, he's going for those BOTs next by the looks of it. Uh, of course, Sorring is queued up as well. Vladimir comes up on KP. And that beast master, an item you've been seeing a bit more in 7.20. Yeah, Plus it's the, uh, the very value when you can get it this early on. The aura is going to give you it's just all this scary push. It buffs up your boars as well. Beast master is that's the lane where Void is just not happy right now. And M. The Spirit Bear is making a chase. Like, he can't exactly attack, but he will scout him out in KP. Ends up finding Kama. Looks like the Raw got the job done with the Mist. In fact, no Mystic Flare. Or just the Raw that got the job done, apparently. KP with the right clicks gets, gets it done. Firefly was there. Couldn't really help out. I mean, level 4 Phoenix. There's just not much he can do to support this Void. KP takes the Tier 1 top tower. And we'll start moving towards the Tier 2 now. Those balls as well, like Firefly losing a lot of HP per right click. So like Kamut does actually rotate into the mid lane now as that Void. He's just given up on the top. Just trying to stack up those Wraith Bands for the moment. You can't really blame him for this. Like, if KP can just solo you as the Beastmaster, there's just no reason for you to stick around in those time locks. Easy bashes. Even with level 2, he's managed to get those triple bashes going. JT at the bottom lane having a great time. Beastmaster at top. The only hero on the Mineski side that's kind of struggling is Tinker, but he's even not that far behind. Yeah, he's losing out on farm to Medusa, but when you see the side lanes going this well, you're not too worried. Oh, they get the root, Guevara. Oh, he'll be all right. JT does not choose to chase any further. Yeah, it's just so hard to, to fight and deal with this lone druid in lane. KP? Yeah, no raw yet, so don't think they've really got the kill potential. Does have a Necrobook queued up, so some of that mana burn could cause OP some problems later on. KP may just want to snipe this. Oh, Not going to do so. OP does end up getting it. Well, Moon, he will farm up his own jungle. Bot lane. It looks like they are making a chase into JT. Kama is there. No Chrono available on him. It looks like he may have just used it. And he oh. will actually get out. He actually gets the root as well on Guevara just before he leaves. Yeah, I think he was just going for some bounty roots there and quickly realized he was in a bit of a hot spot. Luckily, no Chronosphere, or that could have gone a whole lot worse for him. Well, Firefly, KP does have Roar if he wants to throw it out. Forces a dive. I don't even think he wanted to Roar there. He was just happy to scare him off and gets the dive out. And now if there is a Roar with a Mystic Flare, anybody on this Dire side can be killed off with this combo. Well, three to five, ten and a half minutes in. The net worth lead, 3k currently to the way of Mineski. Yep. They want to get this Brewmaster level 6 so they can have the Primal Split coming into play. And then they can just fight with four heroes. Lone Druid can go join the fights. Just let Tinker farm and catch up in the jungle. Uh oh, OP. Yeah. Find himself in trouble. JT's there as well. The Mystic Clear has been dropped. And KP, he had the raw. Doesn't even need it. Just hold him down. That's one of the, the big kills, the Medusa. The one hero farming and doing well on DBG. Now getting shut down. And last game we saw a very even early game in laning stage. It wasn't until later on when Mineski pulled away, but this is why they banned Lycan. They were worried about getting overrun, and that is exactly what's happening here. They don't need a last pick hero to push. Beastmaster Lone Druid is giving them all these towers already. And once Moon catches up, gets his boots of travel, this game suddenly goes from bad to worse for DBG. Yeah. Certainly seems that way. The DBG they just need those core items up. Like you look at Kama. He's still trying to get treads right now. He's stacked up those Wraith fans, but we're almost 12 minutes into the game. They will go for a smoke attempt. Yeah, they're headed down bottom, but they're not going to find many people down there. It's actually the other side of the map. They're at Roshan, and with the Vlads, they're not even taking any damage. This is the easiest Rosh ever. They're blocking all the damage. They're life-stealing it back up with the Vlads, and DBG just have no idea this is going on. They smoke down bottom. They're nowhere near this. They're not contesting. We're 12 minutes in. This is such a fast Roshan for Mineski to be grabbing. Yeah, they will get it at about the 12 and a half minute mark. And DBG, nothing they can do about it. 
bit of a surprise for them. And there's the rose. JT will pick it up. And they will smoke immediately. Of course, Parlay Dai, you mentioned, they're just waiting for that split to come up. And now he does have it. Yeah, we'll see Mineski immediately pick up the DD and make moves. They want to go get some more kills going. They actually managed to get a scan off in the jungle. But that also tells them that these heroes down bottom are completely alone. And they're going to get here very soon. Yeah, Kamai, he's got the chrono, though. He could turn this one around. Looks like Febby will jump in. The T1 is gone, but from the back lines, they are running in. With the Brewmaster split, the smoke doesn't actually break, and they will find one in land. And the chrono oh, is no. there, but it's not fantastic. They actually got the Cyclone off. Guevara is fighting all by himself, and now they found him. Kamai, he's been left alone. All three go down to the bot lane. That was so good from Pylide. I gets the wind panda. He primal splits before the fight even starts. Finds the void, cyclones him. So he does no damage during his chronosphere. They even time the savage roar after the cyclone. So void gets instantly disabled when he lands. Perfect execution from the Mineski boys. And that is a big team fight win for them. The thing is, every time they win those team fights, guys, they get a T1 or T2 tower immediately. Like they push so darn fast. Yeah. You can't afford to lose that many heroes in a team fight because you're just losing so much map control, it seems. It just feels like there's almost no stopping them. Medusa may be the one hero who can. Has that Mystic Snake going for this early Kaya and Yasha, which will be a, is a very value item on Medusa with the stats you get from it and the mana loss reduction. Definitely one of the few heroes this item is just made for. OP. Maybe baiting out. They do get the shackles on Pylite Die Guevara. Doesn't actually try for the hoops. Look, now he does on the bear, so it looks like they just want to try and snipe that down for 300 gold, though. OP gets rooted in place. Meanwhile, they're still going for Pylai Dai, though. He is surviving. Now the stone gates, because Moon is here. He tries to make a run. The egg has been dropped, though. Lan M trying to find a target. He will find Moon. It's going to be a big pickup, and they will get it. Lan M, though, falling low to the march of the machines. He will survive with 20 HP on the Shadow Shaman. Pylai Dai thinking about running back in. The Wild Axes will not connect Lan M. He gets the ferry fire off just in time. Me Meanwhile, Febby in the background trying to slow him down. They'll get Lan M. He's got that came rune. Can they find oh. any more? Looks like they won't. They will back off, but they will get a tier one tell. But DBG, they find the Tinker. That is a massive kill yeah. for the side of the dial. He TP'd on that bear into four heroes. Uh, Moon, a uh, bit of a madman and gets punished, but his team still turned it into a tower plus a kill. Uh oh, they found OP again. They stuck around around that shrine. They just burst him down. They're going to go for more, though. The hoop swap is nice. Hammer, he does come in, no chrono available on him. Guevara, he's about to fall as well, and he, he does go down. And Kammer couldn't find anybody. Skyrat's still very low. Oh, <laughs> poor Fabi. The neutral creeps, they're just running over him. JT gets more, he's just diving towers. The spirit bear taking everything, and they want Kammer. They might be able to get him. What the bloody hell, Kammer? Why is he even there? He throws the chrono out. That's what feels bad. Oh, my. Well, he lives, but... Maneski dominated team fight. There's four bounty runes on the map they can go and grab. And they're gonna take a tier two tower, it looks like. KP with this fast Necro book. Has a Shadow Blade queued up next for some more ganking potential. Now I'm gonna TP in Medusa. This may just be Q Maneski to back off. OP? I don't know about this. JT's yeah. trying to get that root off. Now Cinderbrew is there. They will jump in with Firefly and the Stone Gaze was committed. Okay. That's fine, they force out a, a stone gaze. Just by threatening to go on Medusa with a Tinker TP, they turn it in their favor. They've still got an Aegis on JT as well. Yeah, I mean, why the hell not just keep going? And that's the plan. Yep. They heal up the bear back at base. He can bring himself some new items if he needs it, maybe even his team. Cussive shot, Firefly will cop it. Oh, and Axes as well. So they do get the Yules off, now the Hex and the Ward's being dropped, all on KP. He runs out of there, and now the Fear as well. Palai die. he'll get Lan M. They lose another, they will buy back on Lanham, but I, I don't think, know if they can fight this. They have no Chronosphere still. OP, if he dies right now, and he gets roared up, they are going to try and Sunray to heal him up, but look at the damage coming in from Pylai Die. He's going to go Two for months. even more. They have found Guevara, that Centaur, going to be held in place and just get bursted down. There's nothing you can do about this. Meanwhile, Pylai Die, he's going for more, and they've already called GT. It's over! 16 minutes! Unbelievable. What happened? Blink and you miss it. Maneski just destroy game number two. That wasn't even close in the slightest bit. Very dominant performance. And I guess Maneski, it's going to be one of those teams you have to watch out for. DBG, they aren't out of the tournament, but they will go down to the lower bracket now. And so they've got to be a bit more careful down there. 
They weren't playing too badly, guards, but it's just Mineski. They were just on top of everything. Yeah, I think DBG, particularly in game one, showed they can be very competitive. Uh, they put together a draft that really worked. This time around, they just got overrun these lanes. They really got exploited, I think, for the Void pick. He's not a very strong laner, and even when he comes online, if he has an okay lane stage, he's a Chronosphere, and then he's done. Uh, it was very greedy picking the Medusa last as well. Even if the Medusa farms, it just doesn't feel like it's a hero that's going to be scary because they have so many answers. The Necro books, the Cyclone, the Tinker laser is also really problematic. And it was, yeah, just a, a dominating performance from Mineski here as they now enter the winner bracket finals. Well, with that, gods, I believe we are going to have a, a slight lunch break. And we will be back for OG versus UB Mr. Gamer Boy. That should be a great match. We'll get to see Anna and the boys playing up next. OG finally making their main stage premiere here at the Convictus Tournament. And then they'll be taking on, of course, yeah, Mr. Game Boy, who looked really good in the group stage. Absolutely. So, excited to see that one. We'll see if DBG can bounce back or not. But that does it, guys. We're going to go do a quick break, have a bit of a lunch break, and come back with OG versus Mr. Game Boy. Absolutely.